Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the channel. This is Rapid Fire Reviews, where I try and give you all you need to know as quickly and efficiently as possible. Today, we're going to be discussing the Roland Special, or as I like to call it, the Offensive Pistol. At its core, the Roland Special is a Glock pistol made by ATEI, which whom you can send a Glock 19, and for a substantial amount of money, they can send you back one of their builds. Here is an example of what a Glock 19 with a TLR-7A looks like. This is actually a Glock 44, which is chambered in 22, but it's dimensionally identical to a Glock 19. Substantially smaller than the titular Roland Special we will be discussing today. The modifications on the Glock 19, or the Roland Special rather, include a compensator, trigger, suppressor height sights, a X300, and a magwell. The end result is a firearm that is faster, more accurate, and more controllable than a standard Glock 19. So the idea of the Roland Special really started on the primary and secondary form. I'd highly recommend you look there for the entire history and podcast, but it goes something like this. Originally, this titular Roland, which is the nickname of the creator of the firearm, was playing around with KKM barrels and decided he wanted to try and compensate the 19. After pitching this idea to KKM and being laughed at, according to him, he went through this idea he went through with this idea due to the X300 sticking noticeably out past the firearm, as well as making it so you didn't have to wipe carbon from the compensator nearly as frequently. Additionally, later a RMR was added, as well as a magwell, slide cocking serrations, backup sights, and we arrive at what we have today, which is the Roland Special. First of all, the X300 Arguably the most important gadget or gizmo to have on the firearm, the X300 for the longest time was the best pistol light. Nowadays, there are of course other competitors like Streamlight and Mod Light, but if you want high output and reliability, you really could only look at the X300 back in the day. One of the most notable modifications of the Roland Special is of course the addition of this compensator. Compensator is a device that the redirects gases to counteract the recoil of the Glock. These are the ports on the compensator. This reduces muzzle rise, which makes it easier to quickly acquire a target and fire subsequent shots. Another modification that sets the Roland Special apart from a stock Glock is the trigger. The trigger is, per the website, a Overwatch trigger with a ZevTech minus connector on this build, we currently have a stock MR920 trigger, which is much lighter than a stock clock trigger. I'm going to give you guys a demonstration of what that feels like. Much lighter trigger pull than a stock clock 19. With a very positive, crisp reset. Now. Let's take our Glock 19 adjacent firearm. This is a Glock 44 once again. All firearms in this video have been cleared and are rendered safe, by the way. Pretty stout wall. Break the wall, excellent let off. As well, a pretty great reset, but regardless, a pretty heavy trigger. A lot of people complain about Glock triggers. An ATEI, tries to improve their trigger while maintaining reliability to make a more shootable platform. And lastly, here is a 43X. Just for demonstration purposes, the weapon is cleared. Let's pull that trigger. Heavier than the Glock 44 or the Glock 19 adjacent firearm, much heavier than this MR920 here, still an excellent trigger pull. Reviews of these firearms will absolutely be coming in the future, but for now, let's get back to the Roland. At the top of this Foland special, which is generally what people call a Roland that isn't really quite built by ATI, obviously this is on an MR920 chassis, MR920 platform, that's a completely different comp, 
completely different dot. Everything else is, it's, it's in the style of the Roland type pistol. We have a red dot sight. This particular one is a HE508T X2 in green. In today's day and age, it really isn't a question of if you should purchase a red dot, it's more of a when will you purchase a red dot. Red dots really have eclipsed irons in any way you can think, and they have driven down in price for quality as well, which makes it a lot more approachable than it was a couple years ago. I'll give you guys a vision of what that looks like through the dot. I will have a review on this red dot, or green dot rather, at some point in the near future. Finally, moving down on the ATEI website, they state they will delete finger grooves, which may be a problem for some. For me, I happen to like finger grooves, but more importantly, they will do a undercut, which is right here, that will give you a higher purchase on the firearm, a higher purchase of the grip, which will result or, or lend to extra controllability. At the very bottom, we have the Zev Pro Magwell. Obviously here, we have the stock MR920 Magwell, but the Magwell does two things very well in my opinion. Firstly, it aids in reload speed and consistency. For those of you that don't know, a Magwell is a funnel that helps lead a magazine. Reloading a pistol isn't hard, but having a Magwell makes it a little bit more forgiving, less likely to miss. If you've ever fired a P226, or a 1911, or an MP5, without a Magwell, you'll know what I mean. Here's what a Magwell looks like on a 1911. Much thinner, very easy to miss. The secondary, and in my opinion, more important part of the Magwell is actually the grip that is created. The Magwell lips actually force your hand to be in an optical grip in a way that compacts your fingers slightly uh, and really creates a stable platform. That is actually one of the reasons I prefer magwells on carry guns because it forces my hand on a smaller gun to have much greater purchase on the firearm. This is definitely something I don't think people focus on or realize, but I think it's extremely valuable to have. So what does all this give you? The Roland Special really is a sum of its parts firearm. The compensator was designed to reduce muzzle flip, keeping the carbon off the lens of the X300 as well. The red dot was affixed and becomes more valuable with more controllability and less recoil. The magwell, undercut, and stippling all aid in giving you a much more holdable and controllable gun. The slide serrations help you with all your press check needs and suppressor sights for, of course, co-witnessing if your red dot goes down. I really do feel that the Roland Special is a weapon system, which is a term that is thrown around too much in my opinion. A stock Glock 19 is a weapon system, sure, but same as with an AR-15 with a red dot and that's it, uh, a Roland Special really is a weapon system in my eyes because all of these parts work off of each other and make a system that, once again, is greater than the sum of its parts if built correctly. How does the Roland shoot? Well, this build is obviously not built by ATEI. This is a MR920 with a ARC Division Comp, which I cannot recommend enough, a stock recoil spring, believe it or not, which happens to work with all of my higher spec ammo, as well as full power 124 grain, not plus P, but full power nine millimeter, which of course is recommended. I have an X300 under which it rarely ever gets carbonized. Um, slide serrations, co-witnessing sights, talon grips, and a magwell without finger grooves. Uh, this replicates a stipple job, and instead of costing $300, it costs $30. The gun, shoots phenomenally. I will be putting footage of this in action so you can see the lack of recoil, but it really is quite difficult for me to explain just how well this shoots. A 
if you haven't shot a comped gun, it's hard to imagine a comp is that beneficial. With the addition of a heavy X300 and this comp, I am easily able to get double taps on target or complete build drills without my dot even leaving the optic. This pistol setup is, while less controllable, very close to the controllability you would see in a USPSA or like a competition setup with CZ SP-01s or uh, CZ blue, orange parrots, whatever have you. They're going to be overall less controllable than these dedicated competitions gun, competition guns, but it definitely bridges the gap in some ways. Reliability. Reliability is the first concern with a setup like this. A comp will, without question, affect your reliability as it will reduce the recoil of the platform. For most builds, you may need to change recoil springs. 13 pounds seems to be the average, but your build may vary. In this particular instance, like I said, this recoil spring is actually stock. I have had no issues, and as you can see, this firearm has definitely been through it. The trigger on this firearm, once again, is a stock MR920 trigger which I'm not too fond of, but one thing I do like about it is the fact that it is so smooth. I generally enjoy a hard wall from a stock Glock. Let me give you guys another example of that. Right? But this trigger being lighter and much smoother does make longer shots a lot easier to make. I have made consecutive shots on steel at 100 yards I actually think it was about 14 in a row, and I missed that last one, unfortunately. Now, of course, I don't have it on film, so take my word as you will. Um, a lot of that accuracy does, of course, go to the KKM barrel, which if I haven't shown you already, this is a genuine KKM precision barrel. I cannot recommend them enough. They are more accurate than you by a mile. It goes without saying, the magwell, of course, aids in reloading. That's all in good, well, but why did I make this video? And why is it the first video on my channel? Well, Instagram and gun tubers have a huge influence on the market. There's no doubt about that. One of the recent trends is the pistol caliber carbine or chassis system. Um, I wanted to talk about the pros and cons to a Roland style build over that pistol caliber carbine chassis system that you'd see with like the M17 platform. First of all, obviously concealability. Over here, I'm gonna pull a whole strip on the screen. This is a T-Rex arm sidecar. This is actually for a Glock 34 in case you are interested. This will, of course, conceal the Roland Special quite well. You have 34 rounds of comped 124 grain plus P9 millimeter out of effectively what I think is a almost as controllable platform as a dedicated pistol caliber carbine, as long as you put in the work. Everything I'm about to say really does hinge on you being a proficient shooter, going to the range and learning the ins and outs of the platform. A pistol caliber carbine or a chassis system is absolutely going to be more easy to shoot for a new gun owner or if you give this to, if I give this firearm to my girlfriend or my friend, they are absolutely going to shoot that chassis better. However, if you put in the time, work, and dedication for a platform such as this, I think it's capable of great things, all right? So first of all, concealability. You're not going to be concealing a pistol caliber carbine everywhere you go. You can comfortably conceal this in your waistband The Roland Special is obviously or also cheaper than a pistol caliber carbine or a chassis system. A pistol caliber carbine uh, is probably going to start at about $1,000 for a quality one. They obviously get into ludicrous pricing, so $2,000, $3,000 up here. I have an MCX. I don't want to talk about how much money is in this thing. I will be having a review on this at a later time, but pistol caliber carbines can absolutely get as expensive as the MCX up here. Right, this Roland Special build is an MR920 at its heart. 
that's a five to eight hundred dollar pistol depending on what you get throw an x300 on here for $300 you're up to a thousand the comp and KKM maybe like a hundred to two hundred dollars depending a dot of your choice hollow sun is quite phenomenal nowadays and you can buy two hundred dollar red dots so I would say for about fifteen hundred dollars depending maybe more maybe less depending on the parts you source you can have a spectacular rolling build whereas a pistol caliber carbine you would need a dot a light and an optic or a, a dot a light um, as well as more expensive magazines a lot of the time um, and that can really easily reach that 2,000, 2,500, 3,000 range um, especially considering that those chassis systems are extremely hyped right now they are definitely price inflated so why do I call this the offensive pistol? Early in the 1990s, the Mark 23 was designed. I'll post a picture of that right now. This was to be the first offensive pistol, if you will, or that's what the term was coined. This had a laser, was extremely large and bulky, um, excellent groups of under two inches and 25 yards to HK's spec or to the contract spec. And overall, if you know anything about HK, you know they're over-engineered and bulletproof, right? The program essentially failed due to the concept. What do I mean by that? So I've never been there. I've never done that. I've never been in a combat situation. I am but a civilian. But from what you read online, you quickly understand that the pistol, the handgun, really does not come out unless absolutely necessary. Your handgun only comes out when your primary weapon system is down. All right. It is an extremely capable system, but it just wasn't necessary to have this quote-unquote offensive pistol. As a civilian, unfortunately, uh, we live in a world where there are people that want to inflict harm on others, right? This weapon system stacks the odds completely in your favor compared to a smaller firearm like this 43X. And by the way, I love this 43X. This is my main carry, or one of my main carries. It's much smaller than a Roland, but in a gunfight, I cannot imagine a situation where I'd ever want this 43X or a Glock 19 over this Roland type special, right? This has significantly faster splits, easier dot acquisition after round recoil, a significantly higher output light, which I consider mandatory in a everyday carry firearm, a smooth trigger, which I've discussed the pros and cons of, and overall, it's a much easier shooting experience. When I give this to my friends or random people at the range that ask to shoot this, they all are able to push their ability to its maximum, right? My friends, my girlfriends, my buddies, they all shoot this better than almost any handgun they own. While the 43X, or an LCP, or an M&P shield is great. This is something that even though more bulky, I really cannot recommend enough. Not to be cliche of other channels, this doesn't matter if you don't train, right? My point above is this is generally as controllable as a chassis. The only matter is, is how many hours you put into learning the platform. It's going to take hours, dozens of hours, hundreds of hours of training to become as proficient with this as you would a chassis or a pistol caliber carbine type system, but it is doable. And I think this being lost to time, if you will, and pistol caliber carbines being popular on Instagram and these micro nines being popular on Instagram, I think that is criminal. And I think this concept of pistol really should come back. All right. The last point that I really want to make um, is basically what I just said. I, I really do recommend that if you have the capability, especially if you're a bigger guy, to try and carry a full-size firearm. I am a pretty normal-sized male or a pretty, pretty large male, but I am very easy, uh, easily able to carry this almost everywhere I go. Um, it's not excruciatingly heavy like a 1911. It's not nearly as compact as, of course, a 43X. And the length can be a little bit difficult, but if you have a quality holster 
like that T-Rex arms or a Tanacore type holster. And I would recommend, by the way, you want to look at Glock 34 holsters because of the comp. But regardless, this is an extremely carryable firearm that I really cannot recommend enough to anyone that's interested in putting in the hours and learning the comp, making sure that your recoil springs are all good, testing ammo, um, and overall just having a much more capable weapon system. Anyway, those are my parting thoughts. Um, if you did find any of this information interesting, or if you do have any disputes, uh, please feel free to go into the comment section. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. This channel, I'm going to be covering my MCX, Glock 44, all of the dots here, the 43X. I'm going to be covering 1911s, play carriers, night vision, everything. I'm very passionate about the Roland Special, which is why I made it my first video. I highly recommend you check this out. I highly recommend you check all my other videos out. And I'll see you guys in the next one.